Hey there, welcome back to another episode in my series on building the F-101 fighter and blender. Uh, in the previous episode, we created the basis for the front cockpit instrument panel, and I showed you how to use collection instances to create little details like fasteners um, without having to use up any more memory than is necessary. So efficient way to have lots of little details. In this episode, I'm going to create, uh, show you a method for creating the instrument faces. Uh, we're going to do this rate of climb indicator. I'm not going to do the one that's actually in this drawing. I'm going to do the one that's in my reference images. Uh, it's a little different. And I happen to have another image of it. I'm just going to drag it in here. Scale it down. And this is the one, this is the face we're going to model. Now in this process, you need some kind of 3D drawing software. So Blender, uh, I'm sorry, um, Photoshop, GIMP, something like that. Um, not for much of the drawing, really. Most of the drawing is actually done in Blender. Um, but the, the drawing software is used to organize the images uh, for the UV layout. Um, but yeah, like I said, most of it's going to be done here in Blender. So here's the image we're going to do. First thing I want to do is I'm going to put my cursor here. I'm going to create a circle. And I'm going to scale it down. And I'm going to make the circle for a couple reasons. One is I want to see if this picture is taken square on. So if I put a circle in the middle of it, I should be able to get that circle to fit nicely inside there. Um, if it was an ellipse or something, then it wouldn't fit. So it fits nicely. So that means this picture was taken pretty much square dead on. And now um, I can use this circle to get a good accurate center. So now I can say cursor to select it. It's going to put my cursor right in the middle of this dial. Okay, so I'm going to go into edit mode on my circle here. And I'm just going to put a line straight across the middle here. And this is just going to be a reference line. Because I want to line up my image so it's a little more horizontal here. So with my image selected and in 3D cursor mode, I'm just going to rotate my image so that I get this, this marker kind of straight through the line there. That's pretty good. And I'm just going to mark, see, let's move my empty, move these both into the scene collection. So I don't want them in there. And I'm going to disable the touching of my empty, so I won't be able to move that anymore. All right, so let's start with making these hash marks. Start with a plane. Just scroll that down. Move it up. Let's go into median mode here. And if you notice, they're a little rounded on the ends, particularly the bigger ones. So we'll, we'll do that as well. So that's pretty close. Uh, let's apply scale to this. We want to make sure that's scaled before we use the bevel modifier. So I'm going to go in here, select them all, shift control B, and pull my mouse to the right. And if they go past each other like that, just hit the C key. Charlie, and that'll stop them from going through each other. And then you can use your scroll wheel to move up and get more vertices there. I'm going to hit all, A, all, and then M, and merge by distance. See, I merged two, so that would have been the two uh, overlaying vertices, top and bottom. So we got those. And let's reduplicate this guy, and we'll make this bigger one here. Just scale it up. All right, so that looks pretty good apply scale to that as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into edit mode, select the whole thing, and with my cursor still in the middle here and in the 3D cursor mode, I can hit shift D, R, and just move it around. Now if you were making something that uh, had a more regular tick marks, um, like a clock for example, uh, you could just figure out the number of degrees you need to rotate and then very precisely duplicate and rotate that many degrees. Um, but for this one, there aren't that many marks, so it's not that big a deal to just duplicate them and rotate them. Over here, we'll make this one smaller. So go back into median. We'll put it right there. Go back into three cursor mode. Shift D, R. 
and just keep going around, get all these little ones done. And then we'll do the big ones. All right, so that is our, those are our tick marks. I'm gonna move them off our plane there. In fact, I'll move my template out too, just to keep them separate. So let's add a, um, a text. Let's say, actually, we can join these together because they're all, they're all simply just drawn. So I'm gonna hit Control J. Now they're all just merged into one item. And let's add a texture to this, call it tutorial. Wait. And for this, I want to open up my shader editor. And I'm going to give this an emission shader. And just leave it at white. And I'm just going to give it a color to make it easy to see in the viewport. That way we'll be able to know that it's been assigned to things or not. So now we know that anything that's got this kind of pinkish color has that emission shader on it. All right, tick marks are done. Next thing to do would be the numbers. For that, we're just going to create a text object. So go down to text. It's going to be really big. So just scroll it down, edit mode, and we'll make it a two. And you could try to choose a better font um, to go down to fonts. And you can choose your fonts down here. And I think um, like an alt din See if I can find it. It's as close as I've got. And probably better ones. But uh, it seems to be pretty close. Let's move it up. Scale it. And then just duplicate that, edit it, and change the numbers to match. Now the one for this font really doesn't match the one on the gauge so I'm going to actually just draw it as a plane and do just like we did with the tick marks. Alright so there's our one. Bring it down there and then we just have a little bit more text here. And we got a little arc here I want to put in so I'm going to use my tool cursor to select it. It's going to put my cursor right back there again. Create a circle. I'll make it 64 or 90, whatever, doesn't matter. They're all going to use a little bit of it. I just want it to be smooth. That's the important thing. Edit ES, bring it in. And I'm just going to rotate it so that I have an edge that extends past each ed, um, tick mark there. Select these guys, Control I, X, and then delete the faces I don't want anymore. And then I can take this guy and this guy and join them together. That'll give me that little bit of an arc. And of course we have the arrows to make as well. So I'm going to use a plane for that. All right, so that's all our markings. The last thing to do here is move these off. Let me um, push this back even further just so we can get to our pieces here. I'm going to move them forward and I'm going to scale them along the y-axis so they're all up front and center like that. And let's uh, use the materials. So I'm going to link the materials. And let's do that one as well. I missed one. Link materials. And now everything is built and textured. Now I want to set up an orthographic camera so we can render this and take a picture of our drawing. Uh, for that I want to turn off our empty because we don't want that in the drawing anymore and we don't want that in the drawing. I do have my cursor now in the middle of my image there. So if I say Shift A camera, it's going to put my camera right there. Going into camera, I want to change this from perspective to orthographic. I'm going to move this back along with the Y axis and let's call this camera tutorial ortho. And in our cameras, we want to choose the tutorial ortho camera. So now when I go through the camera view, that's what I'm looking through. And then we want to change the orthographic scale. So I can just scroll this back and forth, and that's going to zoom in. 
and because the um, camera was centered on it we're going to get the image right in the middle of our uh, camera frame and I do have my camera set up uh, to be a square so I got 1024 by 1024 uh, just because that's an efficient way to take a picture of a circle um, yeah so and the other thing we want to make sure is that our transparent is clicked because we want to be able to generate an alpha so if I do a, a quick render of it you can see that this looks this is what we just drew um, so we can now actually just go and hit F12 and render the image and there we go there is our our decal or our you know the the, the instrument face that we just created now I want to save this. I want to save it as a PNG with an alpha. So make sure that it's alpha is checked. And you can see that I've already done a bunch here. So I'm just going to call this the rate of climb indicator. I'm going to save the image. And then we'll just go into Photoshop and put it into a PSD file. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to create a new file. Uh, you can make it as big or small as you want, depending on how many images you want to put in here. Um, so 4096 is fine if you're going to pack a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to hit my fill key. I've already got black selected and I'm just going to create a black base for our uh, dial faces. And then I'm going to drag in the drawing we just made. That's our rate of climb indicator we just created. I'm going to stick it up here in the corner and you, know, you can of course you know, scale it to any size you want. Uh, the idea is you're eventually going to fill this entire page with these decals uh, and then we'll just create a texture to use this file uh, to create the, the instrument faces so with that scaled there i'm just going to hit uh, Control shift s to save it i'm going to save it as a jpeg and we'll call this tutorial to jpeg and that's it for photoshop um, and we're going back into blender and I'm going to, I don't need to be in camera mode anymore. I can just be in the front view. We can hide our camera. And we're just looking at our image here. I'm going to create another plane here. I'm going to create a mesh and a plane. And this is going to be our instrument dial. And I can also, let's move this along the y-axis. And all this stuff here, I am done with. So I'm just going to move that. I have a collection always called junk it's just uh, it's up here it's turned off um, it's just where I throw stuff in case I want to use it for later um, but uh, we are done for done with that for now so here's my plane I'm gonna apply rotation and scale edit mode all U unwrap and if we go to our UV editor you can see that uh, we've got our square there let's create a texture for this guy we're going to call this Tutorial 2. And go into our Shader Editor. Let's open up 2 here. Shader Editor. And I'm just going to hit Control T because i got Node Wrangler on. And we're going to open up that image we just created. So Tutorial 2 is our image. We don't need the mapping because we're just going off of UVs. And if we want, I mean, these are going to be clean, so there's no reason to really do anything you know, special with roughness. Um, just taking the texture through is fine. And uh, we might actually uh, play with the emission too. But let's um, bring this over here and let's open up. I should be able to see it in here, tutorial two. We'll look at it in the UV editor. So there's our image. And if we go into edit mode, we can see our UV layout. I'm just going to scale this down here in the UV editor and just drag it up here and if we turn on rendering you can see the image move around as I move around. Now it's rotated the wrong way. I need to move it 90 degrees in negative at negative direction. But uh, yeah, there we go. So there's our, our dial. If you want to make the, the numbers pop a little bit more um, you can add take the color and drag it into the emission and that'll that'll brighten them up and give you a, a better contrast so you know there's our there's our instrument the next thing we need to do then is just to fit it into our instrument panel so going back up here I'm going to drag it up here turn that on so we can see what we're doing go into median scale it down move it into place
All right, and there's our dial. I'll just move it forward a bit, put it in place. And if this um, resolution wasn't good enough for you, you could always go back to your your Photoshop file. And um, because it's a it hasn't ras we haven't rasterized the image yet, we could always oops, we could always make it bigger and not lose any resolution, right? So you you would need to readjust your your UVs, but uh, because it hasn't rasterized yet, we still have that full full resolution of the original image. So we can close that. Uh, but this is probably fine for for what we're doing here. All right, looks pretty good. The only thing you would need now, you know, is a needle. That's easy enough to model. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. All of these other instruments that get put in here are done exactly the same way. Um, so I'm going to do those off on the side, and then I'll come back and uh, we'll do some other, you know, um, bells and whistles in this. Maybe build these other panels um, and get some lights and stuff on here as a final uh, kind of effect for the entire dashboard. All right, well, thank you for watching. Uh, good luck with your projects, and I will see you in the next one.